Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Angel Zhang and I am a CS undergrad at the University of Waterloo. And this summer I am doing an internship at AMD working with MLIR and Sperry. So I have some prior LVM experience, but this is my first time working with uh, MLIR and Sperry. And today I'll be presenting upstream Sperry conversion, which is, the, which is the project that I've been working on over the past few months. So Spirvy is an intermediate language for representing graphics shaders and compute kernels developed by Kronos Group. And it is consumed by APIs like Vulkan, OpenGL, and OpenCL. So it enables various high-level language frontends to run on a diverse range of hardware architectures. And it is fully defined in a human-readable specification. Uh, now let's start with a, a motivating example of an R of R Mark Max. So argmax is defined to be the input at which a function outputs its maximum value. So in a list of numbers, this will simply be the index or the position of the maximum value. So in this particular example, the argmax equals four because the maximum element is at uh, index four. So now let's write a simple kernel in the OpenGL shading language uh, for the argmax. Um, so on the right here, I have this kernel function and I've omitted some other details. So it is a web workgroup example and where there's only where this workgroup only contains one subgroup. Um, here we have the standard way of computing the, the, the maximum element and its corresponding index from index from an array. So using a single loop. Um, here we are using some subgroup operations to find the maximum element of the subgroup, which is also for the workgroup. And then we find the smallest thread ID with the maximum element um, using other some other subgroup operations. And I think we this, this thread will be responsible for writing the writing the index into the output buffer. So if you are familiar with GPU programming, this uh, example should be very straightforward. So now let's see the same kern, same kernel in Spurvy assembly. So we can see that this is a, a lower, much more lo lower level, and the level of abstraction is close to the LVM. So there's actually there's also a Spurvy dialect in MLIR, and we can see that this is not an exact one-to-one -one mapping from the Spurvy assembly. So if, uh, there are uh, some syntactic sugars that do not exist in the original Spurvy. Uh, assembly format. So for example, we have this Spurvy MLR loop here that indicates a loop region. And we, we can also have some um, indentations that indicates the blocks. So these are make the MLR Spurvy uh, more uh, readable for humans. Now going back to the original kernel on the left, so uh, GeoISL is actually not uh, the best language for writing compute kernels. The first reason being that uh, it, uh, it does not support linking. So it will be hard to write libraries that uh, link together. Uh, so I did, so we will want to have something that's of an SSA form. Also, uh, uh, we also have, we also have already have something similar in Erie that can uh, generate uh, CUDA and Rockham kernels, so it will make sense to have a common way of uh, writing kernels regard regardless of the target. So on the right, we have the, the MLR representation. So it's actually it's actually very easy to um, write the uh, this kernel by hand to match the GLSL kernel. And, and we can see that this MLR representation um, contains, uh, contains a mixture of dialects. From, so Examples are ARIS, GPU, INDEX, MEMRA, SCF. And we can see that we can even mix SPIRV with the other uh, MIR, with the other MIR dialects. So, now, so now the question is, is there a way, is given the MIR representation uh, and its mixture of dialects, is there a way to lower all of them into SPIRV? So the current situation is that uh, there are the individual dialect conversions available in the tree. So some examples are uh, ARIS, ARIS to SPIRV, a font to SPIRV, GPU to SPIRV, etc. Um, however, there's, uh, there was no upstream conversion that can lower an IR all the way to SPIRV. And this, this thing only exists in ERI. 
So we want to have a lowering pipeline that, that can that can convert everything into SPRV, similar to what the convert to LVM pass does. So now I want to introduce uh, convert to SPRV, which is a generic MLL lowering pass to SPRV. So the first goal is to bet to enable best test better test coverage of SPRV compilation upstream. So we already had some previous discussions around this. One of them was also an open MIR meeting about a vector dialect, reshape, and et cetera. So the key point of that meeting was that uh, SPRV, uh, SPRV lowering was very sensitive to the vector canonicalization patterns. So by, but by having such a pass, uh, hopefully it will be easier for us to test and catch things earlier. Um, and the other goal is to uh, allow us to write simple kernels by hand. And one example would just be the argmax that we mentioned before. So the, this, is, this is a list of currently supported input dialects. All of them are available upstream, except for the uh, kernel launch up in GPU that's still in progress. So there are many complexities that are involved in this converted square V pass. So uh, we first, uh, besides the individual dialect conversions, we need to uh, com uh, legalize, we need to enroll the vectors in function signatures as, as well as function bodies. And we also need to map the memref mem types to spare V storage classes. So uh, these are already handled and uh, um, handled in the upstream converted spare V pass. Um, however, there are a few more complexities that are not uh, handled. So, uh, so there are ops like vector max load and max store that are not uh, currently available in the spare V dialects. So uh, we need to lower them into simpler vector ops before the conversion. And we, and we also want to support narrow element types like uh, I8 by performing emula emulation. And we will also want to emulate I64 for targets without 64-bit integers. So if you are familiar with uh, convert to LVM, it, is, it uses an interface-based approach to delegate the injection of conversion patterns to the, to the Daleks, Daleks themselves. Um, initially, I have considered uh, using an interfaces for the convert to SPRV pass as well, and uh, hoping to have a more modular and extensible structure and making it easier to expand the set of dialects that are supported in the future. And there was also an actual attempt of using interfaces for convert to SPRV, and I have uh, a link to Fabian's PR. Um, however, due to the complexities we discussed before, um, in, uh, we found that it was uh, very difficult in the beginning to know what uh, what interfaces were actually needed. And also it was uh, challenging to have a single a, a single interface that um, lowers everything in one phase. So we have decided to start with a multi-stage lowering approach instead of using interfaces. So the first stage of the uh, first stage of the converted spare pass is the signature conversion. So the goal is to enroll vectors into uh, 1D with a length of two, three, or four, so that they are uh, supported by SPRV. Notice that there is no length one vectors because they are converted to scalars in SPRV. And for vectors of length eight or 16, they are, they are actually available via the vector 16 capability. But, uh, at, but uh, for now, we just assume that the capability is not checked or uh, enabled. Um, here are some examples of signature conversion. So we will want to, uh, so we will want to lower, uh, convert uh, vectors of uh, illegal size that's 1D, um, also for 2D vectors, and also for uh, signatures containing a mixture of uh, legal and illegal vector types. So the first step of signature conversion is getting the target shape. Uh, this is a uh, this is very easy to implement uh, because it is already, this, this, this step is easy because it, it is already implemented in the vector enroll under vector transforms. Um, however, there is one caveat. Um, so consider this example where we have a vector of length five 
and we will, uh, the current implementation converted into five vectors of length one, and they will be further converted into scalars by sphere V. Um, however, you might be thinking, uh, why are we converting it into uh, five five vectors instead of just uh, two vectors of length four and one? Uh, this will result in a fewer number of arguments and will make uh, make it more precise. So this is one the one uh, one problem of this uh, the, the current implementation. Uh, so after we get the target shape, we'll begin the actual input and output conversion. So we basically iterate through the list of function arguments and also return values. And for each value, if it is not a vector or it's a vector of legal size, then there is no need to enroll it. Um, however, if it's a vector of illegal size, uh, we will want to use a vector insert stratus slice or vector express stratus, express stratus slice, depending on whether this value is an uh, input argument or a return value. Uh, and we will want to do some um, conversions between the target types and original type. Um, and here's, here is one example of the signature conversion. Um, here we, are, we want to split the function input and the function output, uh, both the input and the out output into two vectors of length four. Um, for the input, we want to first declare a constant vector that's of the original type. And if we want to use the insert ops to um, insert the new arguments into this new vector, and um, and the, the result of these insert ops will be uh, used in the, in the function bodies. And for the return types, uh, we'll be uh, doing the opposite. So we'll be extracting the, the sizes of uh, the target size from the, uh, the original, from the original size, and we want to return the extracted uh, uh, extracted vectors as uh, as the return values. So after function signature uh, conversion, we will want to enroll the vectors in function bodies as well. Uh, this involves four key stages. Uh, first, we want to enroll the vectors to native vector size using some predefined patterns. Um, then we want to convert the transpose ops into extract and insert pairs. And we also want to cast away leading size one dimensions. And uh, lastly, we want to decompose vector insert stratus slice and vector extract stratus slice. So I mentioned that there are some predefined patterns. And in the current version of Converted Sphere V, uh, the supported op categories are element wise ops, uh, transpose ops, and reduction ops. So Unlike a signature conversion, which deals with which just deals with the single uh, input arguments or return values, uh, the function bodies can have these uh, different ops, and different ops can have different structures. Um, so the question is, uh, how can we specify which which operand slash result of this of each op we want to use as the original type from which we want to from which we will compute the the native type. So in the element-wise example, we can use any of the, the operands. We can also use the results type. But this will be different for transpose ops and then reduc reduction ops. So fortunately, there's a type switch in the type switch that can deal with that. So Spirit conversion under Spirit transforms contains all the utility functions for the converged Spirit pass. Uh, in this file, we have a a giant type switch, and we also have uh, custom implementations for different op categories. So in the element-wise example, uh, we are we can specify that we want to use the result type as the uh, as the the original type, and we also specify a uh, utility function for computing the native size from the original size. So the key point is that. Um, it is easy to cover new op categories in the future because we just need to implement this function and specify ho how we are going to get the original type from a certain op, and also the what how are we going to compute the native size from the original type. Uh, next, we want to lower transpose into vector extract and vector insert pairs. 
This, uh, the two patterns involved are transpose of lowering and transpose 2D with unit dim to shape cast. Um, so an example, enabling better test coverage. So sphere lowering is very sensitive to transpose and shape cast. So if anyone makes changes to these patterns and breaks sphere lowering, uh, by having such a pass, we can catch, catch this uh, breakage earlier than maybe breaking Eerie. So uh, as a result of the previous patterns, we may have vector inserts right slice, inserting 1D native vectors into ND larger vectors. Uh, so we need to break them down into extract and insert pairs to cancel out with each other, and also cancel out, uh, potentially cancel out with the other extract and inserts in the same, in the same function body. So, as in, so this is a companion transformation of vector rolling. So as a side, as a side, um, this may be very obvious for experienced uh, MLIR developers to understand the effect of these patterns. Um, however, um, as a beginner, it took me a while to find these uh, relevant patterns and understand what they do. And it was even more challenging to choose the precise Set, set of patterns and apply them in the correct order to achieve what I want. So this involved many trial and errors. So here are some results of vector enrolling. So here we have a vector addition that representing element-wise op. Um, uh, here's uh, an example of reduction op. Um, and we also have uh, an example of the transpose op. We can see that the uh, ops are. We can see that the signature conversion is uh, applied and works well. Works works well with the with the function body enrolling, and we can see that it's um enrolled nicely without any uh, redundant uh, redundant ops that need to be cleaned up. And if we want to support more ops, uh, then we can uh, we can implement some custom the custom of we can implement the custom function of uh and the custom function of getting the native size and also use the predefined patterns. So here I want to discuss some future directions of vector enrolling. So there was something called the one-to-one type conversion, which is supposed to work very well with a function signature conversion. And I've actually attempted it in the beginning, but uh, it didn't work out and I found it to be too complicated for an initial version, but it would be nice to uh, to try this uh, and replace it with the current signature conversion uh, implementation in the future. And we will also want to handle function calls and function declarations, and they're currently not handled. Um, so the other two things were already discussed. So the first one being the uh, splitting the vectors using a better way and uh, the other being uh, checking for the vector 16 capability to support vectors of length uh, 8 or 16. So the so after vector enrolling, we want to deal with uh, memref. So specifically, we want to uh, map the memref types to spherby storage classes. Uh, this step is straightforward because it is already implemented in the memref to spherby. So here I'm just showing some two simple examples. Uh, for Vulkan. So um, after all this pre-process processing, we just we will apply the individual dynamic conversions, dynamic conversion patterns. And so far, we have covered most things for converting the ArcMax kernel to SpearV. So the pass is currently able to convert a GPU module and all of its ops, representing a kernel representing a kernel into a spirit module. And the next step will be uh, plugging it into the MLR runner for integration for integration testing. And we also encourage everyone to try it by writing um, by writing simple MLR kernels and try generating the spirit is the spirit module out of this. And uh, we welcome any feedback or suggestions. Yeah, thank you. Um, Um, any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, just one. Uh, can you hear me? 
Yes. Uh, you mentioned there was like an issue with GPU launch funk. Uh, could you so, could you elaborate there? Uh, uh, are you talking about like the? Oh, maybe I can go back to the slide. Uh, sorry. Uh, could you tell me? Do you, I don't know if you knew, remember the slide number, but um, yeah, are you talking about this part? Yeah, you you said it's something that so I I I don't remember well, but I think you said it's something like there was an issue with the conversion to of uh, GPU launch funk or something. Uh, yes, so I think the GPU launch function is for the host functions to invoke the invoke the kernel uh, code. So for now, my kernel of the pass only uh, converts. Uh, only converts the GPU module that's representing uh, kernel codes. And my next slide will just be uh, try to handle this launch off to see if we can uh, we can just just uh, integrate them into like uh, host functions. So allow host functions to use this GPU launch off to uh, evoke the device code or the just the converted GPU module. Okay, uh, but. Okay, uh, I think I get it. So basically, the issue that you guys are, uh, that you folks are having is that uh, on the GPU module, you are using your uh, current pass uh, and vector rolling, but that doesn't work with GPU launch funk because that is still uh, easy in LVM. Is that right? So they have in the end different signature. Is that the issue? Uh, so, uh, so I think, uh, for now, I think I didn't, uh, haven't included the GPU launch of because I think, um, when because in the, um, yeah, I haven't included the pattern for converting GPU launch of because it is a bit more complicated. I think we want to, uh, it will be no, the launch so, of. No, uh, sorry. Uh, um, the question is. I'll start with a uh, uh, question before that. Okay. Are you planning to convert to SPRB also the GPU host code, or that is still going to be LLVM? I think we are going. Yeah, we are going to convert the host function as well. Yeah, the host function no, can actually. No, that's that's the thing. We want to have a like a nested some nesting to the to the fast pipeline, and only run the conversion on the. On the kernel side, right? And okay. then, as long as you know the signatures, function signatures match, it shouldn't be an issue. So it's it's not that this is something that's fundamentally difficult to support in the setting. It's just that it's not implemented yet. Okay, but so are you converting also all host code uh, to SphereB, or it's no. not going to be LVM? It's LVM. Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, then, okay, uh, yeah, no, uh, that was my question primarily because it means that in the end, you will need to, uh, either run a preprocessor pass just for, uh, that kind of function to use your specific function signature or, yeah, it, it's not like it can be, uh, I think integrated with uh, maybe it can uh, with commercial LVM, but yeah, I, I was just wondering. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Uh, just out of curiosity, do you have like an ETA to get uh, to production level on the survey pass? Um, sorry, what is TA? Like an estimated time that it will take you to get uh, convert to spear B uh, to production level. Um. 
Um, I I'm not sure about this because um, uh, so I think we want to test it for test it using the the MLIR render first to see, see and check for the integration test, but uh, uh, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure about like the if there's a an exact timeline. Yeah, no, uh, that's fine. I was just curious. Yeah, it also de depends on how you define production. Um, I would say production is when it is in a comparable state to convert to LBIN, where it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not like a list of fixed input dialects. Yeah, I would say that what you're asking is kind of outside of the scope of what we are trying to know. Um, that it, it's it's not that we don't have an estimate. It's not even our goal right now. Um, right now, the primary goal of this project was to enable handwritten kernels that we can kind of plug into, you know, code that needs something specific that the compiler cannot easily code on, and then to improve the, the test coverage. Having something similar to convert to LVM is kind of two steps uh, after that, probably. And it, it's, it wasn't our goal. OK, uh, uh, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, it would be nice to have. It's just that uh, we are a bit far from it right now. Um, okay, so if that's everything, thanks a lot, Angel, for taking the time to to present. Um, yeah, this was very comprehensive. Thanks for thanks for sharing oh. all of the insights yeah. and the progress and the you no know, the implementation details. Okay. Um, yeah, th thanks everyone for uh, listening. And maybe I, I'll stop sharing now. Um, do you have more questions? And if there's no other question, then I think that's the end. Uh, I want to, oh, okay. Uh, okay, thank you everyone.